Hello everyone, this is Mike with the 2 Report. Recently, there has been a stir of controversy surrounding the Texas governor, Greg Abbott, who has expressed his intention to pardon someone who was wrongfully convicted of murder. According to Abbott, Texas has one of the strongest stand-your-ground laws in the country, which he says cannot be disregarded by a jury nor any progressive attorney. The defendant in question is Daniel Perry, who was found guilty of murdering Garrett Foster, a left-leaning progressive and Black Lives Matter supporter, during a protest in 2020. On April 7th of last year, Perry shot and killed Foster, claiming self-defense. The case was brought to court and Perry was convicted of murder. Now, the Texas governor is seeking a review of Perry's case by the State Board of Pardons, which has led to a public outcry, particularly from Foster's supporters and the Black Lives Matter movement. The decision to pardon Perry, if granted, would undoubtedly have significant implications. Why is this important? Stick around, we'll get to it later. For now, if you like this type of content, smash that like button. In Austin, Texas, a Black Lives Matter protest was held two years ago in response to the death of George Floyd. During the demonstration, gunfire broke out, resulting in the death of a protester named Garrett Foster. According to the police, Foster was allegedly shot and killed by a man named Daniel Perry, who was driving through the crowd in his car. Following the incident, Perry, who was reportedly driving for Uber at the time of the protest, cooperated with law enforcement and was promptly taken into custody. The circumstances surrounding the shooting and Perry's involvement in the incident are subsequently investigated. The circumstances surrounding the death of Foster during the protest have been the subject of much debate and speculation. Some individuals have claimed that Foster pointed his AK-47 rifle at Daniel Perry before Perry fired his weapon, while others have disputed this account. A photo that emerged online appeared to show Foster with his rifle raised, but the context of the image remains unclear. Additionally, there are conflicting reports on the number of times Perry fired his weapon. Some sources suggest that he fired three shots, while others claim it was five. Regarding Perry's actions leading up to the shooting, there are also conflicting accounts. Some individuals have claimed that Perry deliberately accelerated his car towards the protesters, while others have suggested that he was simply a regular person who became caught up in the protest. A video of Perry turning into the protest has been circulated, but it has not shed much light on the situation. On April 7th of 2023, Daniel Perry awaited news that could have a significant impact on his life. Perry, a United States military sergeant, had been found guilty by a jury of one count of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Foster, a white dude, was carrying an AK-47 long rifle, which is legal in Texas. Perry said Foster raised his weapon, but some witness claimed that was not the case. So Perry, who was also armed at the time, but with a comparatively tiny 357 Magnum revolver, shot and killed Foster in self-defense. According to Texas law and the Castle Doctrine, an individual may use lethal force to defend themselves, their property, or their vehicle. In the case of Daniel Perry, his primary defense was based on the argument that he felt threatened and acted in self-defense. However, it wasn't until April 7th that the jury delivered their verdict in this matter. The recent conviction of Daniel Perry for the murder of protester Derek Foster has left Perry's family in shock and distress. As Perry cried openly, his family and attorneys embraced him. However, the state wasted no time in taking Perry into custody, and he was immediately handcuffed and turned over to the Travis County Sheriff's Office. While the verdict in this case was surprising to some, it can be understood from a legal standpoint. Texas is a stand-your-ground state, meaning that individuals have the right to defend themselves with deadly force if they believe their life is in danger and they have a legal right to be in a particular location. Despite this, the prosecution argued that Perry had other options available to him, such as driving away from the scene, and that his use of deadly force was not justified. The fact that the jury ultimately found Perry guilty suggests that they were convinced by the prosecution's argument. The case highlights the complex issue surrounding the use of deadly force in self-defense situations. While the law may provide individuals with the right to defend themselves, woke cities will have you believe that you should consider a lot of other things before thinking of defending yourself with your defensive firearm. This country has gone to hell. So, you're not allowed to defend yourself against rioters even when they point a rifle at you? That's the lesson. That is incompatible with justice. The recent announcement that Texas Governor Greg Abbott is working to expedite a review of Daniel Perry's case has sparked controversy and debate. Perry is now behind bars. The governor has instructed the pardons board to work on expedited review. Anti-gun liberal progressivists accuse Abbott of playing politics, and some have suggested that his actions are racist. But I would argue, and I'm sure all of you would too, that it's the right thing to do, and that Perry's use of force was a reasonable response to a real threat. 
While the Texas Partners Board is currently reviewing Perry's case, we can only hope that the process will be expedited and that Perry will be given the pardon sooner rather than later. From a neutral perspective, no one deserves to be incarcerated for defending himself. But he's sitting in prison right now, wondering what happened. He only defended himself. He knows what he did was right. The white dude he killed in self-defense had an AK-47 and over 120 rounds of ammo on his person. Dressed just for war with his rifle strapped and was raising his rifle towards Perry who was in flip-flops and beach shorts at the time carrying a tiny revolver. No one on national TV wants to mention that Foster was armed. You see lots of reports saying Perry fired indiscriminately into a crowd and drove into rioters. But the liberal progressivist Soros-funded news outlet don't want to talk about how Perry's car was swarmed with a bunch of riders trying to attack him. Now, we weren't in the courtroom, but there are reports that the district attorney was able to present posts made by Perry related to his desire to engage violently with protesters. Jurors tend to believe text messages, statements made either through text or via social media posts without looking at the bigger picture. There are reports that suggest that what was really behind this guilty verdict was that the Travis County jury felt that Perry's social media messages showed that he went into this encounter with a potential intent to cause harm and use self-defense as an excuse to kill people. Austin, where the incident took place, is known for its progressive values and is governed by a woke mayor who is very unspoken in his opposition to civilian gun ownership. Also, Foster had been a vocal supporter of Black Lives Matter, a manipulative and corrupt racist organization. He was attending the protest with his disabled black wife. In contrast, Perry was not sympathetic to the protest. Given these circumstances, it's understandable that there may have been a non-negligible degree of bias at play in the case. How much of a role that bias played is anybody's guess. But Austin, Texas is essentially a mini California. Texas is a stand your ground state, but even that couldn't help Perry. While the legal principles governing self-defense may seem straightforward, did the individual have a legal right to be where they were? Did their actions justify the use of deadly force? And did they have a reasonable belief that their life was in immediate danger? The reality is far more nuanced. This case is a stark reminder of the importance of having access to legal resources and representation in the event of a self-defense situation. Without proper legal guidance, individuals may find themselves at a life-changing disadvantage. For this reason, it is crucial to consider obtaining some form of self-defense insurance or legal representation. While it may seem like an unnecessary expense, the potential costs of navigating the legal system alone can be far greater. Ultimately, the goal should be to ensure that individuals are able to defend themselves without fear of legal repercussions, while also promoting public safety and responsible gun ownership. So, which companies can you contact about getting a self-defense insurance? I'll share a few. There's United States Concealed Carry Association, or USCCA, Armed Citizens Legal Defense Network, or ACLDN, and US Law Shield. There are many more, and it doesn't matter which of them you choose. We're not being paid by any of them, so we don't have a recommendation. If you're interested, we can do a video on the subject if you want. Like a top 5 best self-defense insurance providers? Comment down below and let us know. Note that these companies don't only provide self-defense insurance, they also give access to a wealth of legal information. We actually saw a video from one of them where a self-defense expert teaches you beforehand how to avoid a dangerous situation and when you can and cannot use your firearm to defend yourself. So if you carry a firearm or any type of weapon for any type of self-defense, whether it's for concealed carry or home defense, you should really look into protecting yourself legally. And that's all I have for you in this video. If you care about your Second Amendment rights, please help our channel grow by clicking on like, share, subscribe, and that notification bell so you're updated on new content. Thanks and have a good one.